to discuss. Let's welcome back business and markets analyst and Newsmax contributor Seth Denson and business analyst Krisha Lenzo. Krisha, I'll start with you. The New York Post reporting Credit Suisse shares hun near all-time lows Tuesday after the Swiss banking giant admitted to discovering material weaknesses in its financial reporting over the last two years. So Credit Suisse is down 20 percent. Futures are down over 500, close to 600. Uh, what's going on here? Well, this all stems from uh, Saudi Arabia basically pulling back investment. Um, with Credit Suisse. And it's problematic because it does seem to be that other banks are taking on this, what could be perceived as contagion. Um, people are looking at the financials more seriously of these banks, and they're concerned about their investments. Seth, same question to you. Uh, Credit Suisse, one of the largest banks on the planet. Um, that would be in line with a Lehman Brothers and a Bear Stearns, what we saw in 2008. If Credit Suisse does fail, uh, their stock's down at $2.50 a share right now. Uh, it was around $14 when Joe Biden took office, just to put that into perspective. If the bank does fail, what does that mean? Well, it means that, <laughs> well, what I said a couple days ago about a couple banks possibly failing, uh, it may be more. Uh, and I think what we're starting to see here, Rob, is that more and more of these banks were taking risky investments. Uh, and, and sometimes in the case of SVB, where, you know, you're looking long term in the long term bond space. But some of these banks were, were investing in crypto and some of these other things. And you've just got to go. That's just insane. It is absolutely absolute insanity. That some of these banks were doing this with some of their reserves. And I think that's what we're going to start to see more of, unfortunately. Well, Krisha, should we be concerned? Uh, I mean, obviously, we're hearing about other banks, you know, that, that are kind of on, you know, everyone's watching. But should we at home be concerned about our money? I, I'm not a financial advisor and that I can't give advice, but I would say that people really should be uh, diversifying where they're holding their deposits at this point. I think it is unwise to hold more than 20 percent at any given uh, particular bank. But that being said, I don't think this is widespread. I don't think the fears are necessarily valid here. But uh, to Seth's point, yes, Credit Suisse is a major bulge bracket bank and they're suffering. I like that. So you're not a fiduciary. Hey, can I make a point so on that? Speculate. I can yeah. speculate. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, because here, here's the thing. I, I agree. I think that for most Americans, they're going to be fine. The Fed has tipped their hand that they're not going to let mid-sized banks fail. My question, though, is what will happen when this is a mid-sized bank in, let's say, you know, Hopkins County, Kentucky, that focuses in the coal industry or in Hastings, Nebraska, that focuses in ag? Will we see the same swift response that we saw for a Silicon Valley bank? Mm. That's my concern is let's not pick winners and cho uh, losers here. We've got to be consistent across the board on how we operate. Such yeah. a good point, Seth. New York Post with some reporting about this a day ago. Basically, all three of these banks have donated uh, huge money to Democrat compared to Republicans um, over the last several years. Um, one bank donating almost $75 million to Black Lives Matter. Uh, we saw a lot of similar donations with FTX, Sam Bankman-Fried, when that collapsed. Um, so I think you make a very good point. The other part of the narrative is what Democrats, led by Elizabeth Warren, are trying to do, and that's blaming this on regulatory pullback under the Trump administration. Take a listen to what Silicon Valley Congressman Ro Khanna had to say yesterday. At 90 percent in tech, tech started to pull out money, both because of the crypto crisis and because of higher interest rates, and they didn't diversify. But one of the problems is that they lobbied to weaken the Dodd-Frank uh, uh, restrictions. I voted against weakening it. They lobbied me and others to, to weaken them, to exempt them from the regulations that could have prevented this crisis. So, Seth, Barney Frank's going to be on with us in just a few minutes, and I'll ask him the same question. But did Dodd-Frank work, or is this Donald Trump's fault? Well, it's, it's, well here's the deal. You've got to blame the actors, not, not the regulators in, the, in, in this case, at least from its core. I mean, do we want a, a system that's so highly regulated banks can't do what they feel they need to do? Uh, this is this, akin to me telling my kids, hey, the pantry is free reign, but then them complaining – uh, when they have a stomach ache in the morning. If the banks lobbied for this, that means the banks need responsibility. I hate a system where we feel like the government's got to step up and make children adults. If you're going to be an adult, be an adult. But to investors and users of these banks, look at who their leadership is. And let's make sure we're investing and doing business with adults. Yeah, great point. Uh, Krisha, GOP presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy has extensive business as an entrepreneur background. Also, uh, you think this is a good opportunity for him to propel himself forward? I know he's written op-eds. He's been very vocal about this. I think Vivek has been right on the pulse, had his finger on the pulse, rather, in terms of this issue, because he really understands the VC community and how entrenched the VCs are with Washington. And he's actually lost support. He talked about... 
how on Twitter he's lost a tremendous amount of support from those donating to his campaign, and he doesn't care. It really puts him uh, to be one of those uh, candidates who's in with the people, and he definitely has shown that by self-funding his campaign and pointing out that the VCs are to blame for much of this hype on Twitter with, with respect to the increased contagion. Seth, markets open up in about an hour, opening bell at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time today. We did not see a sell-off Monday. Yesterday, a pretty good day. We're back in the black across the board. Things are not looking good right now if you use Dow Futures as a barometer. What are you expecting? Uh, well, my hope is that things start to balance out a little bit by the end of the day. I think we'll start to hear some positive news and some good spin on things just aren't quite as bad as, as, as people think they might be. And I think that we'll find some dip buyers that are buying up the market at a low rate. That being said, I've gotten out of the business of trying to predict this market. Uh, my crystal ball is pretty, pretty foggy these days. <laughs> well, I, looked, I like the, the positive news. Hopefully that will uh, reign true and your crystal ball. So you're right. You're right most of the time, Seth. We'll give you that. All right, Seth and Krisha, thank you so much. Much appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you.